Well, hello, 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 everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Inspiring Change show. And what we want to do here is we want to promise, you know, a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of pop culture, but most importantly, for the guests that we bring, we also want to bring you a little bit of insight into the normal, well, maybe when you hear their stories, not so normal, but just a little bit more insight into their everyday lives and perhaps inspire you in your own journey of life of whatever it is that you're facing. I am extremely honored to bring in my next guest. Her name is Susan Rattan, and you may or may not know her from LA Law. She's also been on some very other uh, notable shows, and one of my other favorites as well is Mom. And well, without further ado, I would just like to bring in Susan Rattan. Hello. Hello, lovely. Thank you so much for joining my today. My pleasure. <laughs> Excuse me. That's okay. So I, I know I noticed you're in a sweater, but you're out in LA. So that's okay. Yes. <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been crazy weather here. <laughs> Well, you know, thanks again so much for joining us today. And, you know, I am so honored that you said yes, because you're, you have a very impactful story that definitely we're going to get to uh, later on throughout the show. But, you know, if you don't mind, you are a multi uh, award nominated for the Emmys, which is a huge, huge honor and feat. So, congratulations on those. And you. can you just give us a little bit about some shows that people new and old may have seen you on? Um, well, LA Law was a while ago, so a younger audience might not remember it, but uh, Mom, which was one of my favorite shows, uh, United States of Al more recently. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I just got a tickle in my throat. Um, uh, I never remember what I've done. Um, I've just completed a, a arc on a series called Sprung that's not on the air yet. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking forward to that because it's a really fun role. <coughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and wonderful because we we actually met through uh, vignettes that you were doing because, you know, fast forward to this uh, <coughs> lovely yes. change. And, uh, you know, if you need to take a break, go ahead, take, take no, some water. I'm, I don't know what just happened. That's okay. It happens. Tech happens. <laughs> I'll talk. I'm not worried about talking. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. So one of the things that we met on was the vignettes uh, through David and through Donnie, uh, Don Most. And, uh, you know, it was just really neat to see how you kind of, oh gosh, I try to stay, I try to stay away from the word pivot, but it, it always, that always comes in my head, how we were able to kind of uh, take adversity and turn it into, op into opportunity as the pandemic came up. And then you were able to, to put together the show and you're one of the actors uh, through Zoom, which was so, so different. How, how did you feel about that? Well, first of all, when David contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing it, I was so excited because, you know, nothing had been happening and how to do this, you know, how to have, how to act, how to do your job safely. And this was the perfect, <laughs> perfect way to do it. Um, but I was nervous about it, you know, how to connect with somebody uh, uh, that I, we had no pre prior knowledge of each other. Um and it went so smoothly and so perfectly. I just wanted to do more and more and more that way. I thought I could spend the rest of my career just doing Zoom acting. It was really great. Everybody was terrific. And did you also find too, uh, I know when, when we were interviewing Donnie, how it was very interesting how you uh, brought people together that you otherwise may or may not have met yeah. if it hadn't been through technology. Yeah, I know. That was amazing. I mean, Jim is a wonderful actor and I know of him as a, a as a voice actor and, and other things. Uh, but I, I I'd never run into him, didn't know him personally. Um, but of course, his mother is Marion Ross, uh, which was like that was the bonus when we were rehearsing and suddenly there's her face in the back of oh my <laughs> that, that, that it totally made my day. Um, but yeah, I was so I was so happy. Uh, Anson, of course, I knew from I had been directed by him and other things, uh, so that was that was easy. Um, but you know, also it's such a great group of people. You feel a lot of pressure to really do the best job that you can, um, and I felt like 
everybody just hit the mark all the way around. Mm -hmm. Did you find it any different to doing this uh, like uh, through Zoom on video as opposed to being in person or for you, you were reading the script and it was just kind of uh, like everything just came into to play being the pro that you are and it didn't make any difference because your character was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? It didn't make any difference. I thought it would. That's what I was nervous about, you know, that would we be able to connect, you know, via Zoom? Uh, uh, would it work? Would it be effective? And and it it was. I, as I said, I, I could do that again and again and again. I, I'm going to throw anybody at me. I'll make it work. Uh, it was It was really just great. Such a great project. So many kudos to David and everybody involved in it. Um, just very happy, very happy for David in particular. Yeah. Uh, he has worked his tail off uh, getting this done and raising money and everything. So I hope other people get a chance to see it as well. I hope so too. It's, you know, it was my honor as well to be uh, one of the contributing producers. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was really fun to be part of that. So uh, I will add a link for everybody who may be interested in that. And okay. please definitely, definitely support, uh, you know, all the individuals who are part of that because there'll be more to come. We got to have the premiere uh, when it's safe to do so. We're not, uh, David was telling me he's not sure if it will be New York or LA, but, uh, you know, it'll be really exciting for everybody to get together. So hope you can support it, please. And um, I want to ask you, what brought you to being an actor? So, so where, where did you grow up? Where are you from and why acting? I I honestly don't know. I grew <laughs> up in Oregon, in the mountains of Oregon. I lived in lumber camps. Uh, my father my father uh, was a logger. Um, I didn't know what acting was. Um, I, I didn't even think about them being real people on the television. I don't know what I thought they were, little tiny people. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I never thought about it. Never. I my existence as a child was very basic. You know, it was not there were we didn't go to the movies. We didn't you go anywhere. My family was not well off, um, uh, poor, uh, and struggled. As a logger, you work when there's work, and you don't work when there's no work. If mm -hmm. it gets too hot, you can't work. If it gets too cold, you can't work. So um, it was. I, I never, I honestly didn't, when I was younger, I never aspired to anything. Um, though uh, I, m my mother left when I was two and my father kept me, but he forgot where I was. So he, uh, my grandmother came, his mother came and took me and uh, we lived in the house uh, like two old ladies. Um, mm -hmm. I was expected to be, mature at two, um, to learn how to read myself, uh, to, you know, do chores, things like that, because she worked. She was, she was a wonderful woman, but she had expectations. Um, and I met them, except the only thing I did do was I kept packing suitcases and walking away. I would pack a suitcase and walk down the long hill my grandmother would finally come and look for me and I'd be asleep in a ditch, uh, just laying there sleeping. I always felt like I had somewhere that I had to go. I always, as I got older, five, six, seven years old, reading seriously about other places, other families, other worlds, I realized that there was something else for me. I knew that then. And I knew that somewhere were my real parents. Um, and I didn't find that out until much later. Wow. <laughs> they were. So that's uh, the little secret because that's what we were going to actually touch on after. So, yes. um, so we'll, yeah, that's, um, I, again, your, your compelling story. So uh, that's very interesting. So you always had this sense, like at what age did you learn to kind of listen within? I mean, that like, it, it obviously sounds like you had to be very mature and grow very fast and, and not really have a true childhood. If I like, that's you had correct. To, yeah. Had to grow fast. Yeah. So when, when did you learn? Cause that, that's a, that's a big skill to, to trust your intuition and just like, no, cause so many of us will suppress it. 
how did, yes. how did, how did you know, like, mm, there's, there's something more. When I was um, eight, my father remarried and brought me to live with them as a babysitter. And uh, by the time I was 12, I knew that I couldn't be there anymore. And I left, I walked away. Um, and I was, a friend of mine walked away with me. She said, this looks like fun. Um, and we went to stay in this Boy Scout camp that was no, nobody was using. And uh, her parents looked for her. So when they found us, they took me and I said I wouldn't go home again. I just couldn't. It was too awful. Mm -hmm. And I was offered a chance to go to um, a, a convent boarding school, um, all girls school. And I leapt at it. I thought, yeah, I'll be on my own. Wow. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would, I would leave them behind. And I did. I was there for five years. And, uh, and then I came home for about three weeks after I graduated. And I left again. Um, so I knew when I was 12 that I had to save myself. Uh, and I... I can't say I did the best job of it, but I really, I worked toward it. And today I feel like all those lessons paid off that I, I became the person I wanted to be, the person I aspired to be. Um, yeah, so that was. I almost want to tear because when you're talking, I'm thinking about children right yes. now who are hurting yes and uh excuse me um <laughs> yeah i'm thinking about children right now who who may or may not be listening or watching hopefully or maybe even parents who also experience the same thing that you did and you know i'm so glad you know whether it's the universe or however or god however you want to look at that um, Sister Mary, if you went to the con or Sister Susan, if you went to the convent, sure. but, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's hard. I can't even imagine at 12 years old, but you just knew at that point that you had to leave. And I'm just imploring for anybody right now watching or any child that you seek solace or go to a trusted adult or look yes. for a resource or something where you can go, especially in this day and age. And if you're not treat being treated in a way that you feel you should be treated, trust your instinct and please go for safety and go for help. Um, you know, there's, there are resources, the kids help phone and all those different things yes. um, out there, thankfully today, because back then I'm sure Susan, it wasn't, there wasn't any, there was nothing, there was nothing, there was no, nobody, there was nobody available. In fact, one of my aunts later on, after I um, became an adult and was living here, um, we met for lunch and she said, you know, if this were today, we would have called the police. But back then, you just didn't do that. I thought, God, that's so sad. But would you? But would you? Because you you kind of also don't know, you know, like we don't know unless we share. Right. So I guess it depends on the relationships that we have because we only know what we know. And then would 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, it's it's hard to look back and hard to look know, back. You know, yeah. What, what was the right thing? But you know, it, was, it. I always felt that I was on my own. Um, nobody. So you're, you're I would go out in the woods all day long, uh, <laughs> in the mountains with mountain lions and bears, and nobody ever looked for me. I would go out in the morning and spend the entire day until dark wandering around the woods. Oh my gosh. Playing Jane of the Jungle. And did you have any brothers or sisters or? I My father and his wife had three daughters uh, who were uh, uh, eight, the oldest was eight years younger than I. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they were one year apart after that. I see. Um, so uh, two of them, those girls have passed away and one is still alive, but I, I'm not in contact with them. I, I don't have the youngest, the youngest one who I never even knew. I mean, she was born six months before I left and I mm. uh, didn't have any contact with her at, for five years. So, 
Okay. Um, so I loved so, convent school. I just want to say that I loved course. convent school. I loved the nuns. I loved the structure. I loved that. I knew that if I did something wrong, this would be the punishment. If I did something right, I would get this reward. It was uh, great. Yeah. And, and honestly, it's what you needed. Right? Yes. You, yeah. you clearly, after what you just said, that you would take off in the woods and nobody would look for you. So it's that sense of belonging, that sense of purpose, um, you know, and, and having that structure that you could go, OK, well, there are, you know, benefits and then there there's, you know, there's rewards and, and punishment, right. maybe not punishment, you know, but, you know, there's consequences to those actions and different yes. things, which you otherwise probably not would have had that discipline. No, no. Right. Right. And I, you know, I admit I struggled with that <laughs> the first year yeah. that I was used to doing things my way, um, did what I wanted to do. I loved school. That was the one, you know, one positive thing I had going for me. I loved to read and I loved school. Um, but I would do things that were just, I don't know, testing, <laughs> a lot of mm -hmm. testing. But the nuns never, you know, they never said, oh, you're out of here. You know, they, they just like kept pushing me back into line. I actually asked the Mother Patrick, the headmistress, if I could be a nun and <laughs> said, I think I have the calling. And she said, nobody's calling you. Oh. <laughs> if they were, it must have been a wrong number. Uh, so, oh, cheeky. <laughs> because I didn't want to leave. I thought right. uh, this is like the greatest nest ever. Um, so yeah, I left. Uh, so, so then what do you do from there? So you went back home for a little bit and they were like, yeah, no, this is not home for me. And so I, you graduated to go to university and cut like, uh, no, I not then I had a scholarship, but, um, I didn't have any place to live. Um, and I didn't have any money, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for school. So I went, I met a friend of mine who had been in school with me up in Renton, Washington and stayed there for a little bit. And my mother, who I hadn't been in contact with, I mean, really only a couple of times over the years, she um, she had said to me when I graduated, she came to my graduation, that if I ever wanted to come down to California, where she lived, that she would uh, send me a ticket, a bus ticket. So uh, I called her. And I said, I think I'd like to come down. So she did. And I went down and I met her. Um, and that was awkward. <laughs> mm. um, she's a nice enough person, you know, but we didn't really. How much time had gone since you had seen your, seen your mom? Before my graduation from high school yes. and prior to that, um, I think she said that she saw me when I was five or six, but I didn't remember that. So really, for me, my memory is from being under two uh, and her screaming and grabbing me and, and my father grabbing me back and her driving off and, and uh, with her other two kids, which was always kind of a sore point. Um, but they were from a different marriage. Uh, but uh, he had hurt her. He had you know, beat her up, beaten her up very badly. And it wasn't safe for her to stay. So, you know, uh, her ticket was to let me go to him. Um, and I, I always looked for some kind of anger about that, but I, I never found it. I, I felt sorry for her. She had a bad childhood. Uh, my Daryl had a bad childhood, um, abusive childhood. You know, nobody knew what they were doing. They didn't know how to save themselves, let alone anybody else. That is, that's so profound. But, it, and again, your maturity level, I don't know if that's like more of a self-protection, but again, as a child, a child just wants to be a child and to have fun and loving. But for you to learn compassion again at such a young age, just again, yeah. a test is a testament to the human being that you are. And that's what, that's what comes across and uh you know just anybody who's going through anything that's not going to be your expectation right now of, of where you are in your journey for sure right. uh everyone is different but i yeah i didn't i didn't realize um 
it was, you know, it was that deep. And, and so we, so we go forward and then you, I, I can understand about the relationship with your, with your mom mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how uncomfortable that would be, because I know for, for my, for my personal story, if I may just indulge a little mm -hmm. bit, was, of course. Uh, is that my children, um, uh, so my story is that uh, I was living in another country and I was married to uh, um, a wonderful man. He was, you know, I thought wonderful. And basically fast forward that I had a one-year-old child and a one-year-old boy and I was pregnant with my daughter. And unfortunately it was a very abusive situation. And, uh, you know, it was literally fleeing from my life. And he mm -hmm. told me that I could go, but the child that our son would stay. And so I said, under no circumstances, would I be leaving my child under that? Because that's not how I wanted their legacy and their, I, I needed to change the generational um, stigma and generational thing. There was no way that I was going to let my boy be raised to think that it was okay to treat another human being or their wife or partner like that. And to, of course, to separate my two children, there was absolutely no way that I could do that. So that was my personal choice. So I did anything and everything I possibly could to get permission to leave, uh, to make sure that I have them intact. So that was over 24 years later uh, or 24 years ago, but my daughter just met her biological father a few years ago and it was very awkward. It was, I don't have a relationship with this person. He's calling me his dad is like calling Hey daughter. And, and I know he's my dad, but he didn't raise me. I don't, I don't know them. They're not, they're not who I am anymore. They're not part of who I am. They're not my culture, how I grew up. So I can only understand that the kind of awkwardness because you're, you're a young girl and then you see your mom at you know, graduation. And it's kind of like, well, I'm not, I'm not that person. You, you didn't influence me that way. I, I went, I did things for myself to create who I am today. Right. So it's, I can call you mom or I can call you whatever her first name is, but I can only imagine that very awkward relationship. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It was difficult. It was difficult. I, so I didn't stay with her for very long Yeah. because she suddenly wanted to be a mother who, mm told me what to do and where to go and I'm sorry <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing I because yes yes um my ex did the same thing to my daughter yeah. put his arm around her as she made some sort of comment and I mean she's she's already in her 20s you know and and he he decided to try to parent her mm -hmm. and said well should you it was about a boy or something about her boy right. well, well should you be and she just went, are, are you, are you, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> you, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't parent me now. Um, mom, mom's like so chill. And, and, you know, if any, if I need a consult, thank you so much. I'll go to mom, but <laughs> 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 sorry, that's why Perfect. I was chuckling because I totally understand. Um, so, okay. So I'm really curious though. So you're going through all this amazing life journey and you're figuring you have to grow up really fast. No, Sister Susan, I'm going to call you Sister Susan now every time I see you. <laughs> how, how acting, how on earth, because we have been so graced with your, with your acting and everything now and in your characters. How does that happen? Um, okay. Um, I came down to California um, and I, I, I met, a, I made a friend, a woman and uh I moved into her house, which was great because I needed to find a job and everything. And and um, this is the preface to that acting. Okay. I I was out one night uh, with another friend at a Shakey's Pizza, and there was this really cute guy, young guy, sitting at the counter, and he kept staring at me, and he kept saying, "Come on up." I said, "No, I'm with my friend," and. Uh, he said, uh, you know, can I get your number? I said, I don't have a phone. Um, and he said, well, you know, maybe we'll, maybe I'll meet you here again. I said, yeah, maybe. And uh, so I go with my friend um, out to the car. There's a guy, not a boyfriend, just a guy. And um, we get in the car to drive, and suddenly there are sirens behind us and lights. And um, 
policeman got out of the car, came over and said, yeah, I'm going to do a sobriety test on you. You're weaving to the guy and um, told him he failed the test and, um, and that he was going to take him in. And I'm sitting in the car going, he didn't drink that much. I don't know what's happening. Um, and then Mel, who was the man at the bar, came over and said, I'm going to give you a ride home. His friend was a police officer. And he made him pull the guy over and arrest him. And then he released him at the station. Um, we got married about three months later. <laughs> I saw this coming. Yeah. <laughs> Um, That's funny. he was, uh, <laughs> wonderful and damaged from Vietnam and, uh, smart, brilliant. I, uh, I loved him so much. We, he stayed in the service for another couple of years and then we went to Germany stationed there and then we came back and he had, you know, Veterans who have gone through terrible things suffer so badly and don't get the support that they need. They get medications thrown at them, which don't do anything except make them numb for a little bit. And then they relive their terrors. And he did. He was special forces and he was at the front of the lines. He was a medic and he, the things that he saw were just, I couldn't live if I'd seen them, I don't think. Right. So he came back, he got out of the service, and um, two weeks later, he died in a motorcycle accident. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, it was really hard. Um, but he was taking all of the drugs that the VA prescribed to him, and they made him manic. And uh, so he died. He died, and that was, that was really hard. So I was living in... Um, uh, town outside of San Francisco at the time. And uh, a friend of mine, I got a job, I was working as a cocktail waitress. And a friend of mine said, I sewed costumes. I was always sewed my whole life. And I, I would make like these weird costumes and I'd wear them to work. <clears throat> you know, dead brides and mad clowns and, you know, all this stuff. And he came, he was living in Santa Cruz and he said, why don't you go back to, why don't you go to school? I'd been at the community college in Santa Rosa for a while. He said, you should look at costuming for, for theater. And I said, okay. So I quit my job and I moved to Santa Cruz and enrolled in school. And um, I made a friend there, Leslie, who was in the acting program. I was in the technical theater department. And she said, will you give me a ride to an audition? And I said, sure. And she said, you know what? You'd be perfect for this role. And I said, oh, I said, I don't, I'm not an actor. I don't even know what you do. And she said, I'm going to talk to my friend, Steve, who's in from New York. He's directing the show. And I think he should see you for this. And I said, okay. So I they gave me a script. They told me to go up on the stage. <clears throat> I said, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing here. And he said, just read it like you normally would. And I started reading with this other nice fellow and <clears throat> people started laughing. And I, I stopped and I said, is this supposed to be funny? And he said, yes, just keep going. <laughs> but I thought it was like supposed to be a drama or something. So um, anyway, he asked me to do the show. And I said, all right, I'll do this show if I can do the costumes for the next show. Big wheeler dealer, right? <laughs> uh, so I did, and I worked at that theater for five years doing um, every other show and doing costumes for the next one. And it was a brilliant, brilliant experience. The friends, we're all friends still from that time. Um and That's I, so resourceful, though. Good for you. <laughs> well, what I found was that acting, um, you can cry on stage and everybody thinks you're acting. Uh, they don't know that you're crying over your own real pain. They just go, God, what a brilliant actress. That was so real. That was so heartfelt. And it's real. And that was what kept me in it, that I could act out all these emotions for people but they were really my emotions um and it was it was great it was really great 
I really commend you actors for doing that because I took some acting lessons from a Hollywood actor and uh, there were there were times um, in the VIP master classes that I was trying to figure out, you know, he, he was trying to draw more out of me, you know, for, for that very reason. And, you know, you you go into the scene and then you're, you're drawing, but you can't do too much personal because you have to remember that you're the character. Right. And I remember in this one scene and and they were all silent after after we gave our performance. Uh -huh. But then I couldn't shut it off. Yeah. But then I was triggered. Yeah. And 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 I thought, ooh, maybe this acting thing professionally <laughs> isn't for me because I didn't know how to stop it. But it happens, you know what? And it's cleansing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think you should ever try to shut it off. Just mm -hmm. sit with it. Yeah. Uh, it happens for every actor that there's something that they do that. I mean, I've done shows where it was hard to shake the character. Um, because she lived so strongly inside me. Some aspect of me identified so strongly with that that I, I couldn't let go of it. Um, it. It takes a while sometimes. Can you, okay, so you were on a show that people may or may not know, but you were on a really, you were on a long time on LA Law. That was years. Yeah. Which, was which, is, which is wonderful. And then you were brought back for the reboot, I believe, on the movie. So mm -hmm. that, that character... And now getting the opportunity of speaking with you, you two are not alike at all. No, <laughs> no, no. So Okay, people, only maybe one aspect. So people can go on to Netflix and they can Google LA Law because it's mm -hmm. very interesting. It really was ahead of its times. And it's really yeah. fun. I love it. I love crime or law shows. But anyway, yeah. sorry. So, but, you, but look, okay, so look at Susan. And now when you go watch the show, you're, yeah, you're, you're not the same. Please tell no. me. <laughs> Not the same. I had red hair for one thing. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, you know, maybe a part of me was that that longing for that she had for love for that person. Um, uh, but I think that was pretty much it. I'm not, uh, I'm not, a, you know, and, and she also was not afraid to speak her mind on occasion to stand mm -hmm. up for herself, but she was, you know, at the effect of other people often. Um, I loved her so much. I think of her as another person. I was really sad when the show was over. I left in the seventh season. My son had just been born and I was crazy. I didn't have the first idea of how to be a parent. Um, and I, I said, I have to focus completely on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be like my parents. I don't want to be like any of those people who a child was just, oh, here's the nanny, honey. You know, I just wanted to be there and experience all of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And shout out to Jackson. So Jackson, yeah. that's your son. Yes, yes. for sure. And uh, yeah, so raising him and then did you and then continuing, did you continue to read parts and, you know, do other shows? What? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I never stopped working, which was great. I've been really fortunate. Not haven't done any more long term series. And I don't think that I would really want to at this point in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so much work. Um, mm -hmm. Though half hour shows are great because you through there basically for three days you know, shoot it one evening and you're done. Um, I loved so, you on mom. I love, I loved that show. I love that show too so much. <laughs> I loved everybody on it. Uh, Anna mm -hmm. Ferris, we spoke about this, Anna Ferris, who I did every, we were in Gamblers Anonymous together. Um, I played this wacky character named Lucy um, who just couldn't stop gambling no matter what. Um, and uh, she was the, she's so authentic, you know, she's not standoffish. She's, she really embraces everybody who embraced everybody who came on the set. We had so much fun together. I, 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 so, so I said, I could watch your face for hours. It, she's, her, her expressions are so intense. Um, and then she left the show and that really, uh for me it, it broke my heart um but for her it's what she needed to do um
And then again, I commend that, you know, she took a stand and said, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and especially, reason. yeah, for the, her personal reasons. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. you know, what was really intriguing, I think what, what sparked that conversation was, what was it like for you, you know, having all this experience and then this ensemble is like family and then being a guest on, on their show and then, and then being part of a, a already, a, already assembled family really. So what was that like? You know, were they all welcoming and, and is it hard for you as an actor or are they just welcome you and then you can just do your, do your work. On that show, it was easy. Everybody just hugged you when you came in, when you could hug people. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was so happy to see you. They valued their guests on the show, which makes a huge difference. Uh, you know, having worked on shows where they didn't really value the guests, where they were a click and the door was locked and you couldn't break through. It's really hard to do your job when it's like that. But this, you know, had the room to really be the best that I could be on that show uh, and so supportive and so much laughter. And uh, yeah, it was the greatest. It was the greatest. I'm sad that it's gone. Mm. Do you have any tips for someone who may want to go into acting? Go the other way. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Cause you can't say that to anybody. Everybody has to do what it's in their heart. Follow your passion. Yes. Yeah. Learn, you know, learn how to be an actor, take classes, uh, uh, memorize things every day. Memorize obscure things that will fill your brain with magic, and 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 open yourself up to the possibilities. I, I had a niece who came to California and stayed with us for a while, and she said, "I want to be a star too." And I said, "I said, are you? Have you studied acting? Have you done anything?" She goes, "No." And I said, "Well, do you sing?" No. I said. What do you do? She said, I'm pretty. And I said, <laughs> well, you are pretty, yes. I said, I think reality TV might be calling you. <laughs> <laughs> but funny. I just think, you know, if it's your passion, you have to follow it. Um, everybody says have a backup. Well, you know, the backup can be anything. You know, I, I say it would be great if you had something else that you're really interested in. Um it's hard when you see people struggle in this business forever and not break through. Um, it's really a challenge. Uh, I don't know. You can't make. You can't tell somebody to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Can you I picture? Your, can you picture yourself doing anything else? Oh sure, I I'd do anything. I'll, I'm I'm doing something right now, which I I sadly I can't tell you about except a little round story. Okay. Um, this, and this is not about the one woman show. This is something else. Um, and when I can tell you, I will call you and tell you. Okay. Because it's very exciting. Oh, it's, I'm excited already. Yeah. yeah let me promote it. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just say myself and my two partners have a, a deal. Um, to create a show mm -hmm. and we're very close uh, to actually getting it on the air. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. And it's something that's been in my heart for 40 years. This is how you don't give up. You have something that you want to do. You keep going, you know, you never know. You never know what will turn up. I'm so glad you said that because just bef before you even started talking about it, I was I was literally going to ask you, does it bring joy to your heart? Yes. Like that that was actually what my instinct was saying. Ask her, does it bring joy to her heart? And then you said, this yes. has been in your heart for 40 years. Yeah. See? It's, it's amazing. Yeah. You, you can make it happen. You know, if you keep, you know, I know we say think positively, but you have to. You have to say, this is something that I want to do. How do I get there? How, what do I need to do in order to accomplish this? Who do I need to talk to? Who do I need, what do I need to learn? Um, what, what's going to help me propel this forward? Um, and that's, that's the way this has been for me. I'm, I'm just really fortunate. 
And never stop, especially when other people at what when they look at you or whatever, whether it's your financial circumstance, whether your gender, your race or whatever yes. age, and they say you're crazy. Yeah. And it's up to us to say, well, your opinion doesn't matter to me. I need yes. to keep going and I need to focus on what is best for me, yes. which is why I'm so proud of you, even though I'm just getting to know you, that no matter at what, that you are taking this opportunity now to follow your heart and you're telling yourself, you know what, it's time. Yeah. It's time to, to you know, and, and not be in your head and going, well, you know, maybe the circumstance or maybe the pandemic, you're like, nope, let's forge forward and let's do this. Yes. That's yeah, great. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it is great. The thing for me now is finding this satisfaction in another arena. I think, you know, I'm not as um, compelled to be an actor anymore. I I love it when I do it, but I... I don't feel compelled to like get out there and get every audition and do and be working all the time. Um, I'm enjoying this new direction so much that, uh, yeah, I could do this for the rest of my life. I almost, I call it um, like an evolution. Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like just because that's how it was. That was just a stepping stone of how or who we are destined to be. Yes. 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 So that's exciting for you. So we'll put a pin on that one and everybody's right. just going to have to tune in later when, <laughs> again, when, when that is able to be public. Yes. So you mentioned the one woman show. Yes. So that brings us to our next story. Oh and uh, as we've got nine minutes left, okay, it went fast, didn't it? Oh my it goodness. It went really fast. <laughs> yes. So let's, so, Oh gosh, where do we start on this? So much in nine minutes. Okay, so the one woman show. So you gave the, the very, very clear synopsis earlier of your life, which is the most important piece mm -hmm. of where we are today. So please, please give a little bit of insight on that. And then that way we can talk about your one woman show. Um, a little bit of insight on what? How Sorry. how did you derive to your one woman show? And then oh. and then we'll end on the one woman show. Okay. Um well, I had been toying with it for a long time. I, I kept thinking back on my life and, and you know, what we're doing today uh, really is that I wanted to share experiences, not to have it this sad, you know, memoir, but of have it be also filled with life and, and comedy and, you know, who are all parts of who I am. And, um, and then it all kind of changed a couple of years ago when I got information that I didn't have before. And I thought, oh, that's where all this is coming from. That's what I need to address. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's, it's not even about the acting so much, you know, though there's part of that in it. It's mostly about how, how my life was, how it, transpired to make me the person that I am today, uh, which is a whole human being. Um, uh, wanting to give that back to other people, to share it with them. And really it's what we're, we're here, sharing that, those stories with them so they can go, oh yeah, that's familiar to me. I've experienced something similar. Uh, let me see what I can do with that. Um, so what happened? What what did you find out? Because you, you said earlier that you had a feeling that things yeah. weren't right. Yeah. And if I, I did ask you uh, before the show, if it was okay to ask yeah. you this question. So, uh, so you found out some information I, about your family yeah. that yeah. really was devastating and made prove that you weren't crazy. Number one, yes. that you trusted your instinct and you were right and that they yes. weren't really who you thought they were. Yes, I found out, um, well, everybody knows Ancestry.com and you and me, whatever it is, 23 or something. Yeah. And um, I uh, got one of those kits because I wanted to find out um, about my family history and where we all came from. And uh, uh, so my, I said to my cousin, uh, on my father's side, I said, let's do it together. Let's see what, you know, what we find out. 
Well, we found out that we weren't related. Um, that, um, in fact, my father wasn't my father. I wasn't related to any of them. Um, and they were all going, well, you're still our cousin. And I'm thinking, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I knew this. I knew this. I knew this when I was six. I knew that there was something wrong, that I wasn't where I was supposed to be. So this was two years ago. My mother passed away two years ago. Sorry, um, this was only two years ago? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. My mother mm -hmm. passed away. Well, she passed away two and a half years ago. And, um, but she knew this, right? She knew that Daryl wasn't my father. She had to have known. I didn't look like anybody else. I, I, um, I, I don't know. That it was, it was really hard to process. Um, I felt gypped out of knowing who my real father was. And then I found out, um, I found a cousin on the site, a, cousin, a, a nephew of, of my actual father's, and he had passed away um, many years before. Uh, but I spoke to him and he told me, he told me the most wonderful, made the most wonderful picture of my actual biological father, that he was a kind man that he was creative, that he liked to build things, that he was always doing something for somebody else, that he never had children of his own. Um, his wife couldn't have children, but he loved his nephews and, and he was uh, happy. And I thought, that's who I was supposed to be with. <laughs> that's the guy. Um, yeah, he loved to read. You know, all these like things I go, I love to read. <laughs> you know, it's like, I like to build things. I, I, uh, I just thought that's the person. And it took me a while. That's when the anger at my mother came in, that she couldn't have told me that and that she had died too soon for me to talk to her about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, that all got swept away. Um, I almost feel like I need to have you back for another story to talk oh, about. Oh, it's time to go? <laughs> no. Well, yes, shortly. But I mean, I, I almost feel like I need to have you back for just to explore uh, tenacity and forgiveness. And like, I, I just feel like there are so many more layers here than yeah. than just touching on where you are. Like you're 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 a miraculous human, like just how, <laughs> you, like, like, no, honestly, like instinctively how you just, you know, you just kind of take things and, and I'm and not even rolling with it. That's the, that's the wrong way. But in, in terms of how you process thing and being very pragmatic on, well, what can I do about this now? And how do I process this? And, and even, you know, your advice to me on sitting on something and allowing yourself to feel whatever you're feeling, mm -hmm. because that's what you can control. And that's yes. what I'm sensing from you that, you know, as much as there's this pain and this hurt, you're, you're, you know, you're setting this amazing example for yourself and for your son and whoever impacts you personally on how you can handle something because, you know, your mother had passed and, and there was nothing you could do. There were no answers that you could get um, from that. It's just, uh, anyway, I could just go on and on. So you're, <laughs> um, so you, you get that information and then uh, your your one woman show is really cool to me because one of my best friends, Alyssa, also did that. Mm -hmm. She is a she is a, a, a childhood survivor of of abuse and did her one woman show and an amazing cellist, and uh, uh, that impressed me. And then she took on all the characters of the people that she was talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, in the in the last uh, three minutes, unfortunately, could you please give us a little insight to your show? Um, well, it, <laughs> the beginning changes always. Uh, I'll just preface this by saying all of my father, my, I call him my faux father now, uh, all of his family, he, everybody, they were Norwegians. And that meant something to me, that I was a Norwegian, because it meant Vikings. <laughs> but that was why I was so strong, because I had Viking blood in me. Um and when I found out that I wasn't a Viking, I was that was the most upsetting thing. 
that I didn't have that. So I then I thought about that and I thought, oh, that means I'm just strong. I'm just a strong person. I took off my horns and I laid them down and said, okay, I'm not Norwegian anymore, but I am a strong human being. And that's kind of where the show starts is, uh, as I mentioned, I have somebody helping me now putting it, uh, assembling it. Uh, the show starts with not being Norwegian anymore. And what a blow that was. If you wake up in the morning, you find out you're not Norwegian. What does that do to you? Uh, it, it's, it's just, uh, you know, kind of a, I have the beginning. I have the beginning for you. Yes. Tell me. So you, you had the Viking hat. Yes. <laughs> and you're standing there. And then in the dark, cue the light, right? Yes. You've got your Viking hat and you put it down and you look at it and you stand at it and you go, well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> it's yours. It's your story. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's about, you know, it's like going back and forth in time and what circumstance, things that happened, you know, like um, just bits and pieces about my life. I've been married three times, two times because basically they kept asking me uh, and I, I just said, all right. One where I was walking down the aisle and I said to my friend, help me. And she <laughs> said, I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. The first one you didn't stand a chance. If they went through all that with the police effort and escort and oh my no, gosh. That, that was, was truly my only husband. <laughs> the rest were just like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I tell myself, Susan, I said, you know what? I did it twice. Uh, got the ring, didn't get the ring. I have nothing else to prove. I'm good. That's right. right. That's how I feel about it. Nothing got, else to prove. Yeah. Got, got the best part out of it. Got the children. That's, that's, that's yeah. all. Yeah. That's how I feel too. Yes. Yes. It's all perfect. Well, you've been absolutely a delight. Unfortunately, our hour is up and I oh would love, I'm going to take this opportunity to, would you come back again? I will. Gladly. <laughs> you are terrific. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. So everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we will definitely be posting when Susan's shows are coming in the area, um, her her very private, private uh, secret. I don't even know. I promise you, I don't even know. She didn't <laughs> She didn't even put it in writing. Uh, mm -hmm. So <laughs> and her I had a little uh, private uh, head to head before, but no, I don't even know. So uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. Susan, you're an absolute delight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, if there's anything that inspired you today, or even if you have an inspiring story, by all means, share it with me. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Stay safe, stay healthy. And thank you so much for tuning in. Bye, everybody. Oh, 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 oh,